What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and on today's video we are looking at the Brooks Ghost 15. Now look, I know we all love these exciting running shoes with latest technology that studies show make you faster. But guys, let's just be real. The majority of our miles are going to be in a cushioned shoe, something that's comfortable. And when it comes down to it, the comfort of a shoe is the most important thing that any runner needs. And I'm starting off by talking about comfort because the Brooks Ghost 15 is remarkably comfortable. Now, before we go any further, Roadrunner Sports was kind enough to send me the Brooks Ghost 15 for the purpose of review. However, they're not going to get a chance to see this video before you do on YouTube. But I will go ahead and link to the Brooks Ghost 15 on Roadrunner Sports just in case you want to pick up a pair for yourself. And I think you might. Okay, first things first is price and the Brooks Ghost 15 rings in at $140 or $139.95, still very affordable, at least relatively speaking. In a world where $200 running shoes are becoming the norm, $140 seems like a bargain. Now, the Brooks Ghost 15 is a neutral running shoe. It does fit true to size. And I would actually say that this is like a traditional running shoe, a traditional daily trainer. The Brooks Ghost 15 is something that will work for everyone. And I do mean that. I think this shoe will work for everyone. And that does include people like you that run fast at race marathons. If you run a long way, you are going to look for a shoe to log most of your miles in comfort. And on the other side of the coin is someone just getting started. If you are just getting started, the Brooks Ghost 15 is going to ease you into running by wrapping your feet in a blanket of goodness and comfort. But we're going to talk more about how the shoe feels and how the shoe rides in just a second. Let's talk about weight. Brooks claims that in a men's size 9, the Ghost 15 tips the scale at 9.8 ounces or 278 grams. Now, that is a tenth of an ounce less than the Brooks Ghost 4 last year. So it's not much of a weight reduction, but at least we're heading in the right direction. Of course, I don't wear a US men's size 9. I wear a US men's size 13. And in my size, the Ghost 15 tips the scale at 12 ounces or 340 grams. And compared to last year's Brooks Ghost 14, my Ghost 15 is a tenth of an ounce lighter or 3 grams. Now, I've got to say it's not really noticeable on the foot compared to the Ghost 14, but I like seeing those numbers heading down. As far as stack height goes, this is a medium cushion shoe. We have 35 millimeters in the heel, 23 millimeters in the forefoot for a 12 millimeter drop. Now look, I know, I know a lot of you drop snobs out there are gonna be hearing 12 millimeter drop and you're like, meh, that's not for me. And if you are one of those people, I challenge you to give the Brooks Ghost 15 a go. And I think you'll be astounded at the comfort. And also, at least compared with some other higher drop shoes that I've run in, the Ghost 15 does not feel like a traditional 12 millimeter drop shoe. It's probably something to do with the midsole geometry or the outsole rubber or just how it rides. And honestly, a higher drop is very comfortable to run. The shoe is made for the majority of runners out there. Obviously, runners is that predominantly heel strike when they run, which according to the numbers most of us do. And Brooks is also heading in the right direction as far as sustainability goes. So last year on the Ghost 14, Brooks was using 37% of recycled materials in their upper. This year in the 15, Brooks is now using 62.5% recycled materials in the upper, which is always good. We're all a fan of sustainability, right? Okay, let's get into it. Let's start at the top. Let's work our way down. We're going to start with the heel collar. Now look at this. That heel collar is nice and padded, which of course contributes to the comfort. And the step-in feel is absolutely spot on. When we look at the heel counter, ooh, I can't press that down. That internal heel counter is pretty rigid. And when you put your heel into the shoe, it just feels like it is locked in place and it's not going anywhere, which is really what we want when we're using this shoe for what it is meant to be used for. So recovery runs, easy runs, long runs. What we're looking for in these situations is comfort and we definitely don't want any heel slip. And Brooks has designed this heel collar and heel counter to really prevent any heel slip. Now one of the big changes of the 15 over last year's Ghost 14 is their engineered air mesh upper. It's very comfortable, it's very breathable, and it is a 3D fit print for added structure. But ultimately that really doesn't tell you anything. From my first hand experience running in the 14 and then to the 15, the upper of the 15 just seems a little less bulky. It seems a little tighter and well fitting and a lot more structured. Now of course last year when I was running in the 14 I was a big fan of the 14. It was a nice shoe for going out and running easy and to be honest I didn't have any issues with the 14 but back then I didn't have the 15 to compare it to. Now I do and without a doubt I prefer the upper of the 15 over the 14. I do like the very simple design of the Ghost. We've got some slight overlays and of course the overlays running down the eyelet chain just to give it a little more support when you cinch those laces down for a nice lockdown. And of course right here in the middle we do have a lace loop with the number 15 written on it and I only point this out because that is how the tongue is staying in place. The tongue is not gusseted. Now if you watch any of my other videos you know that I do prefer a good gusset. However, 
For me at least, it's for just a security standpoint. I like that security of having my tongue gusseted, of tied to the sides so it doesn't slip. However, at least in the last year or two, in all the shoes that I've tested that have not had a gusseted tongue, I haven't experienced any tongue slide. The tongue slides to the side of your foot while I'm out running. So me wanting a gusseted tongue is probably a bit irrational. As for me, I really don't think it makes that big of a difference, but I want what I want. I like a gusseted tongue. However, the lack of it in the Ghost 15 didn't really make any difference to my running. The tongue stayed put once I tied the laces. But one more thing about this engineered air mesh upper, it is a dual layer. It does feel very nice touching it and it also feels very sturdy, which again, that is what we want in the daily trainer. We don't want these shoes to wear down as really these are the shoes that we are going to be putting in most of our miles. And I don't know if you've ever had it where your big toe kind of starts to break through the upper. It is very unlikely that's gonna happen in these shoes just because there is a little bit of reinforcement with the dual layer air mesh. And as I'm feeling it right around the front here, we do have some internal reinforcements on the toe just to give you a little extra protection and structure. Okay, let's come down to the midsole because the midsole is the second thing that Brooks has updated on the 15 over the 14. And it's the midsole that makes the ride of this shoe just a little better than the 14. So for the Ghost 15, Brooks is now using DNA Loft V2. Now the DNA Loft foam has a unique blend of rubber, air, and a less dense EVA foam. Now Brooks says that that blend gives it a plush feel. And yes, I, I guess I would agree that it does give it a plush feel, but actually not really. There are other shoes that I would describe as plush. I would have described the Ghost 14 as a plush ride. The DNA Loft V2 is just a little bit firmer than the DNA Loft found in last year's iteration. And it's for that reason that the Brooks Ghost 15 rides quite a bit better than the Ghost 14. The Ghost 14 was a little bit too plush. Again, I only found this out in hindsight once I wore them and compared them to each other. But the DNA Loft V2 just feels a little more snappy. Now I use the term snappy very tongue in cheek because because this is a daily trainer. And even though during my testing phase, I have gone out, I have run intervals, I have run tempo runs in the Ghost 15, it is generally not a shoe that I would pick for those kinds of workouts. However, it did perform well when I wore it for those workouts. And I think I can attribute that success to running those workouts in the new foam. Let's come down to the outsole and you can see there is a lot of rubber on this shoe, which of course is a good thing for a daily trainer because we want these shoes to last. If we're putting in 60, 70% of our daily miles into a daily trainer, we're gonna be racking up the distance that we put in these shoes quite quickly. And the Brooks Ghost 15 has plenty of rubber to go the distance. Now, before I retired my Brooks Ghost 14, I had run about 350 miles in them. And I gotta say, they could have gone a lot longer. The only reason I retired my Ghost 14s is because I have the Ghost 15s now and they still have a lot of life left in them for someone else to use. Now, Brooks is using a slightly firmer rubber on the crash pad of the heel and that is just for the sake of resiliency. When a lot of runners run that they strike their heels first, especially at slower paces, which is what this shoe is ideal for, they're going to be striking at this rear lateral edge and that is going to wear down quicker than the rest of the rubber. We come up to the forefoot, Brooks is using a much softer rubber and actually it is surprisingly soft. The outsole rubber on the bottom of the Ghost 15 is actually soft to the touch. And as of the filming of this video, I have put about 40 miles into the shoe. Do see a little bit of wear, though nothing that is concerning after 40 miles. And on the back, I'm seeing a tiny bit of wear, but again, nothing to make me think that this shoe isn't going to go the distance. In fact, if I had to guess, this is a minimum of 400 miles shoe. I'm gonna say that if you are one of those people that likes to keep your shoes for a very long time, you're probably gonna get Five, I'd say maybe even 600 miles out of the shoe. But of course, by that point, you do have the midsole degradation, which is likely gonna happen after putting that much volume into your shoes. The Ghost 15 is very flexible. You can see I can just, I can bend that with ease. And it's that flexibility combined with the softer rubber on the forefoot and the harder rubber and the segmented crash pad on the heel, which contributes to a very smooth ride. Now I have overused the word comfortable when describing the Ghost 15, but honestly, I can't think of a better word to describe this shoe. The Ghost 15 is more than the some of its parts. When you put everything together, it is very easy to see when running in this shoe why this is one of Brooks' most popular running shoes. If there was a new runner that asked me, Matt, what shoe should I run? I'm just getting started. I just want something that's comfortable where my feet's not gonna hurt. I am definitely sending them to the Brooks Coast 15 because the comfort, the step-in comfort, the whole thing is just spot on. This shoe is going to fit nicely into my rotation right along my Mizuno Wave Sky 6 for those easier runs, those 
daily runs, those bread and butter runs that we all do the most of. So yeah, this was a this was a pretty positive review of the Brooks Coast 15, although I didn't know it was gonna be a positive review even six months before this shoe came out. Brooks has just done something right with their Ghost. And again, if you wanna pick up a pair, I will provide a link to Roadrunner Sports, and that is an affiliate link. But of course, like all my affiliate links, using it won't cost you anymore, it just helps support the channel. I guess if you have made it this far in the video, thank you very much. Look, it's a big deal that you have stayed this long. And if you have stayed this long, why don't you let me know by putting the avocado emoji in the comments. I had avocado toast for breakfast, so that's the reason for me coming up with the avocado emoji. This has been my review of the Brooks Ghost 15. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days.